forgot this morning to uh, say something I wanted to say concerning my neighbor. Uh, I have uh, been visiting her quite a bit. And, uh, her both legs are uh, affected from the cancer treatment that she took, and they're just terrible looking. And uh, we are trying to encourage her. And uh, would you ask y'all to remember her, pray for her. I asked her if she knew what salvation was, and uh, she didn't make no reply as far as, uh, and I tried to explain to her about salvation, what it was. So uh, uh, I feel for her, and uh, y'all y'all remember to pray for her, because Amen. it's a pitiful situation. She's there by herself. and. Uh, uh, she can't get out. She can't get out and go to the mailbox anymore, and so uh, she just has to stay in the house. So do remember her and uh, uh, remember to pray for her soul. Look that. Uh, it's pitiful to to think about. Of course, she's. I, I I just I don't know. I don't know what she's been brought up in church, or I don't know anything about it. I just try to gradually get into it and not show. You know that I'm trying to be uh, uh, nosy or anything, but a little by little, and so uh, y'all just remember to pray for her because uh, if, if anybody around with her needs our prayers, well, if everybody needs our prayers, but but she, I, I mean, that's one that I, the Lord showed me that uh, she needs needs help. So remember her. All right, we want to turn to the book of Matthew this morning in the twelfth chapter. And we want to start in verse 30. Uh, well, let's go to verse 29. I think uh, that, that will kind of build into this lesson just a little bit more. Uh, 28, turn to 28. We'll, we'll get started here. In verse 28 of chapter 12 of the book of Matthew, But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. Now, they were talking, uh, criticizing him, and, and, and he's talking about casting out Satan, and they, they showed it, said he was casting out by Beelzebub, and we're familiar with that, but he says in verse 29, or else how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house. And this, this thing with spoil, I got to looking at it, and it's a uh, plunder. It means uh, to plunder into or to steal or piv privilege. And that means just to get in and to uh, take anything, do anything. And he's talking to uh, the, the uh, people there and, and he's given an example and how that the devil, how that the devil interferes and how that he, uh, when he was casting out devils, he was doing it by the help of God. And uh, they accused him of doing it by the devil. Well, he goes on to tell them, "Well, if you, if the devil, if I'm helping the devil, then if if it's, if, the, if 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 the devil, if, if his works and all is divided among himself, then he won't stand." But he's also saying here this morning that uh, he is he he's given an example of how that the devil can get in and how that he can disturb, how he Amen. can privilege how he can uh, plunder in, in our lives. And you know this morning, and I know this morning too, that how that the devil can interfere with our lives. And he does it in such a smooth, slick operation. And he's, he's, he, I know this morning that he was, he's upset. He's upset because we had some good services. I know mm -hmm. that. And I know this morning that he's, he's tried to interfere with the, even the song service this morning. He didn't want us to hear he arose. And listen, that is where that he met his Waterloo, mm -hmm. is when Christ arose when he died <coughs> and was and resurrected. And so this morning, here we see in verse 30, he that is not with me is against me. Amen. Now this is, puts us, this puts us right where we need to be. If we know the Lord Jesus Christ and, and, and our spirit bears witness with his spirit and listen, the Holy Spirit comes in and deals with our hearts and souls this morning. Listen, we are children of God. 
But he says here, he that is not with me is against me. And that this morning is a terrible, terrible thing to think about being Amen. against God. Because, Amen. listen, you're against preaching like we had the other night. You're against teaching, reading the Bible. You're against this. And maybe you don't really realize how terrible it is. But it's a terrible thing to be uh, walking around without the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ as your Savior. And this is what he's trying to tell them. He says, uh, he, uh, and, and he that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. And so this morning, uh, those that are not with the Lord, if you have a desire, if you have a love, a fleshly love for your children or uh, a fleshly love for your friends and things like this, listen, you're not going to help them any in your condition. You might make out like right. and pretend, but listen, he's going to go on and tell about the fruits of the tree. And you're going to scatter more than you pull together because, listen, there's nothing in your life that is true to God because of, of, your, of your unbelief in him. And if you're against God, if you're against the Lord Jesus Christ, then you're going to do more damage than you are good. And so... If, you know, and, and I'm, I'm talking to anybody that wants to hear this. If you're trying to encourage, if you're trying to do something and you're lost, listen, the best thing for you to do is first is get your house in order. Amen. And then everything will be much smoother. So he said here in verse 31, Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. But the blaspheming against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. Amen. Now, here is the thing about this blaspheming against the Holy Ghost. So many people does not know what it means. And they, they think sometimes if I get out here and if I steal something or if I get out here and say something ugly and I blaspheme against the Holy Ghost, then listen, there ain't no chance for me. Because listen, what it says here, Wherefore, uh, uh, wherefore, I uh, mean, in, in verse 32, and whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Now listen, Amen. that puts, that puts the soul that is lost out here, that puts a soul out here that, uh, he said, well, then the devil's done put in his mind, you can't, you can't serve the Lord. You can't do this and you can't do that because, listen, you remember what you did once before? Well, listen, then you sinned against the Holy Ghost and you, you, you're, you're just out in the cold. Well, listen, that's not true, people. That's not what he's talking about at all this morning. There is sins against the Holy Ghost, but listen, if the Holy Ghost of God the Holy Spirit is dealing with you at any time. Listen, you have not sinned against the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost, when, through sin, if you, if, if you deny him, that is the sin against the Holy Ghost. And if you, if you reject it, because listen, what happened was that Jesus came to this earth and he died for the sins of the, of the world. And so... At a time, he said, I've got to go. I've got to leave. I'm not going to be here any longer. But he said this, I will do. I will, I will pray to the Father and, the, and, and, and ask him to send you another comforter. Amen. I've been your comforter all of these times, Jesus was saying to them. But listen, I've got to go. And if I don't go, then he can't come. And so what he was talking about going was to the cross, and he had to go to the cross at Amen. a certain time. And he, he speaks in there several times, hey, my time is not yet come. But listen, brother and sister, when he time, when that time come, listen, he left. Amen. And he said, the, the, I'm going to pray that the Holy that the Holy Comforter or the Comforter come, but he can't come until I, I leave. And so we see here, I want to read something to you this morning about this. If I can find it four, in the chapter 14, I believe it is, 14, 15. And it's, it, this, 
this this is something that we that we need to understand about sinning against the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. In verse 14, in verse uh, uh, chapter 14, and verse 15, I believe it is. That's not it. Uh, look at look at 15:26. Look at 15:26. I'll get back to this. 15:26. But he answered and said, it is not meant. Mm -hmm. I knew it. <laughs> well, anyway, I, 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 I thought I had it more, people. Uh, just bear with me just a minute. And the Lord will help me here with this. I've got a note here somewhere or another. And Bert, look at 16, 7. Well, I, got that. I had this one also. I'll get to it in a minute. 16, 17. It is not expedient. It is expedient that I go away. It's what what is supposed to read, and uh, I can't find it. It's sixteen. Uh, I think that's something. Sixteen. Okay. Uh, I've got it wrote down here in plain black and white. And it ain't right. <laughs> Bless the Lord. Okay, I, I'm not reading. I'm not right. Well, I'm sorry. I know it's John 14 and 15. John 16, 7. John 15, 7. 16. 16, 7. Okay, I, that's what I was looking for. I, I had it. Sixteen seven. Okay, I was looking at seventeen. Sixteen. Bear with me, y'all. I can't find chapters. Uh, okay. Sixteen and verse seven. And the reason I'm seven. No, it's John. John. I'm in Matthew. That's what's wrong with me this morning. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right, we're going to get on with this in a minute here. <laughs> uh, just in a minute. 16 seconds. Um, okay, now we're right. Now we're right. Thank you, Adam. Thank you. Okay, now. Uh, in verse, but verse 5 of 16, but now I go my way to him that sent me. And none of you ask me, whether goest thou? And because I have said these things unto you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient. It is demanding. It is the thing that I've got to do for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you, but if I go, if, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. Amen. And this is what is, this is what the problem is, people, this morning. That's the reason the devil is interfering with me so much this morning. Listen, he don't want us to understand. He don't want us to hear this. He despises this teaching. He despises, he despises God. And he don't want us to know that the Holy Spirit has come in the place of Jesus Christ, and he has come and with us, and, and, and when we are saved, he dwells within us. Amen. And listen, he guides us, and he leads us, and he directs us. And listen, when, when these things come up about the Holy Spirit and, and, uh, and blasphemy in the Holy Spirit, the devil wants to, tell, to use it and tell you, listen, you, can't, you just can't live for You can't live a Christian life because you've already blasphemed the Holy Spirit. And listen, any time, any time that the Holy Spirit is dealing with you, listen, you have that opportunity to come to the Lord Jesus Christ and ask for forgiveness of your sins and, and, and you have not blasphemed against the Holy Spirit. If that, if that Holy Spirit is dealing with you, 
then then you're 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 not in that category. And listen, I don't know, uh, you know, I don't know for sure when when a person gets to that really, but I know this that the devil will use this scripture to interfere with you because listen, he used it on Jesus Christ. He told him, he says, is it not written? Uh, if you you know, the, he wanted him to jump off, and and and, and he said, uh, uh, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. But he said, it's written in the Psalms that he will, the angels will pick your feet up and keep you from falling. And and he uses these things. Mm -hmm. And so this morning, it's a, it's a dangerous situation to get into the mind that you have blasphemed against the Holy Ghost, because listen. Uh, you need you you're in you're in a dangerous position because you've lost all hope. You've lost all hope in your mind. But listen, in God's mind, listen, you're 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 still His until such a time as the Holy Spirit leaves you and you don't worry about it no more. And then when the Holy Spirit leaves you and and don't talk to you and to uh, speak to you concerning your salvation and all this, then and only then are you to be worried. And so this morning, I, I'm sorry that I've, I've made such a mess out of this this morning, but the devil has just interfered with me, something terrible. And, but I want to, uh, here in verse John 14, 15, look at this. If you love me, keep my commandments. Amen. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. Now, why he said another is because I said this while ago. Jesus has already been our comforter. He has been the one that spoke to the apostles. He is the one that inspired the apostles to write all of this. But he says, he says here, he shall give you another comforter. And the reason why that he had to go is because he's sitting there on the right hand of God. Amen. Making intercessions for you and for me and for our sins. And, Amen. For, and listening to our prayers and hearing us. And listen, he's got another job that he had to do besides dying on the cross of Calvary for our sins. And that is that he has got to be there for to, to repeat our prayers and to, and to tell God, listen, that's one of mine. And when God looks on Jesus, on Jesus and sees that blood, he cannot deny what Jesus is saying. And so he, he's there. And so he said, this is the reason why he said, I'll send another comforter. There's got to be a spirit here upon this earth for salvation to take place. Amen. And this is the, the Holy Spirit. And he says that he may abide with you how long? Forever. And listen, that means forever, and that's uh, until everything is done away with, and we're in the, in the presence of God and the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ, then we'll all be together. And he says here, even the spirit of truth whom ye, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him. For he dwelleth with you. Now, this he's talking about the Holy Spirit. And he says here, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not. And that's the problem this morning with so many of the people is that they can't understand the Holy Spirit. And it's like it's been mentioned here time and time again, the, the Holy Spirit. The, the holiest people over here are uh, speaking in tongues and all this. Listen, it's not, it's not help the situation any at all because we look at them and say, well, they're kind of off the rockers a little bit. But listen, we need to understand that the Holy Spirit is here this morning right with us. Amen. And listen, we can speak to him. And he's not, he's not one of these misty big spirits that, that we want to think about. But listen, he is an individual spirit. Just like Jesus Christ come from heaven as a man and walked upon this earth, the Holy Spirit moves in that manner too. And he's not no, he's not no ghost like that we assume, an invisible ghost. But listen, he's plain and we can see him and we can feel him and we can hear him and we can talk to him. And listen, this morning he's real. And so he says here, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. The world will never receive the Holy Amen. Spirit. But he says, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but he know, but he knows, knoweth him, for he dwelleth with you 
and shall be in you. And that's the consolation this morning. That's what gives you that ump to want to be a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what, what gives you the love to, to, to serve the Lord and to do the works that uh, he would have you to do. And to, just to be an encouragement to everybody. He says, uh, I... Uh, and, and, and shall be in you, and I will not leave you comfortless. Amen. I will come to you, and that's that is the Holy Spirit talking this morning. He says, "I'm not going to leave you comfortless, Amen. and I'll come to you." And Jesus sent him, and he says, "And yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more." That's Jesus. But ye see me, because I live; ye shall live also. And at that day ye shall know that I am in the Father, and ye in me, and I in you. Amen. He that hath my commandments, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself unto him. And in verse uh, in 15, this is where I was trying to find it, in Matthew in 15, 26, 1526, notice what I'm fixing to read to you. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. Amen. And this, this morning, people, that's what that Holy Spirit, that's that, that unction, that feeling within your soul and spirit this morning when he speaks to you. Listen, it's coming from God the Father. Amen. And so this morning, you you listen to it. You pay attention to it. You don't deny it. You love it. Amen. Because it's true, and people uh, people makes fun of, uh, of, uh, of it. And, I, you know, I have kind of rolled my eyes about some of the things that the people do with uh, all this talking in spirits. No, listen, I understand. I understand the Holy Spirit. Amen. I understand that he's with me and in me and 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 he speaks to my soul because I've heard it too many times. He says, and verse 27, notice, and ye also shall bear witness because ye have been with me from the beginning. Now, I want to read this, but these things in verse, look, look again in verse uh, 16, verse 4, but these things have I told you that when the time shall come, uh, when the time shall come, ye, ye may remember that I told you of them, and these things I said not unto you at the beginning, because I was with you. That's Jesus talking to the, the apostles. But now I go my way to him that sent me, and none of you ask, asketh me whether goest thou. But because I have said these things unto you, your heart is sorry, filled with heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. And that is that is why this morning that Jesus Christ went to the cross of Calvary mm -hmm. and he shed his blood. He took all the pain. He took all the beating. He took all the criticism. Listen, he, he was lower. He was lower than any person could ever be put. And he come from the highest temple Amen. that could be come from. But he made that change for you and for me. And he... And he did his work here, and then he sent another comforter, the Holy Spirit, to be with us and to uh, uh, guide us into all things and, and direct us. And so back in our lesson, now we'll get back into the lesson just a little bit more, and then we'll, we'll try to close this up. But anyway, in Matthew 12, notice here, after he says... Uh, in verse 32, and whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Now, you think about this. He says this about the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is in the place that he's in. He says, it'll be forgiven if you speak against the Son. Because the Son has been here, but he's gone. But the one that's, that's here with us and is working with us, listen, you be careful. You be careful and you listen. And don't you, if you're saved, don't you deny, don't you reject what that Holy Spirit comes to you and says because, Amen. listen, people, it's better to listen 
Then they just say, oh, no, that's something, that's something different. But you need to listen to it. And so here, again, in verse 33, notice, either make the, the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and the fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. And Amen. this morning, that's speaking to you and to me, and that's speaking to every individual in this world that's bad or good. Listen, if they're, if they're, if they're living for the devil, you can tell by their fruit Amen. What the, what, what's going on with them. And listen, you can tell a Christian this morning by the fruit he bears. Amen. And sometimes, sometimes there might be one slipping through the cracks, as the old man says, that's not saved, and he's trying to put on a pretense. But listen, that fruit will get sour. That fruit that Amen. he's producing will get sour, and Amen. you'll know him. You'll know him by his fruit he bears. You just bear with this. And so here he says, you, 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 for the the for the tree is known by his fruit. Now notice, a, a old generation of vipers. How can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Right. You know what James says about the mouth and about the tongue, and those that those that are bearing bad fruit, those are that are spurting off all of this stuff and, and, and saying these things. Listen, you can pretty well know you don't judge them, you don't uh, criticize them, but listen, you know within your heart that they need salvation. Amen. But the thing of it is, uh, that's that's between them and the Lord, and if you can be a witness to them, be a witness to them. A good man out of the, in verse 35, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasures bringeth forth evil things. And so that identifies the evil from the good. The evil man has a, he says here, he brings forth evil things out of uh, evil treasures. And he's got evil treasures. He's got worldly possessions. He's got worldly things that, uh, that are hindering him from uh, serving the Lord. And uh, the most of the times, that person has never made any kind of confession at all. But anyway, that's, again, that's not, I'm not judging. But he says here, but in verse 36, But I say unto you that every idle word that man shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. And so one day he'll, they'll stand before God and give an account. Amen. And uh, praise the Lord, we won't. I don't think we'll be there to hear that. Uh, I don't. I don't want to hear it uh, because. Of, but anyway, but uh, uh, in verse thirty-seven, for by the, thy word thou shalt be justified, and by thy wor words thou shalt be condemned. And so this morning, be careful as, as James. James. Uh, he told us about the little tongue. He said. <laughs> he, he said it's on hell. He's, he's full of hell far. And it's it's not really uh, as controllable as uh, as uh, as we think it is, and sometimes we let it we let it get out of control too quick. Now, this is what we wanted to see here, and then in verse 38, <clears throat> then certain of the scribes and Pharisees answered, "Master, we would see a sign from thee." Here we go. But he answered and said unto them. An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it but the <coughs> sign of the prophet Jonah. And this morning, as we were singing up from the ground, up from the grave, he arose, I thought about this. He says that Jesus is saying to him that Jonah, the sign that they saw with Jonah, and he went and was thrown in the, into the into the ocean and a, a large fish a whale or a monster whatever the, they use different things in here but it says it uses a great fish swallowed Jonah went down into the bottom of the sea and stayed there for three days that's a sign he says you'll see all right then Jesus Christ came into this world and he walked some 30 33 and a third years and went to the cross and was crucified 
And they took him down and they put him in this cave in the ground and he lay there three days. That's the sign. That's the sign that he's, Jesus is saying that you're going to see that sign. Amen. That's the only sign you'll see. And that's the only sign that we need to see. Amen. This morning. That's the only thing that we need to be told about is Jesus Christ and his death and his resurrection Amen. And, and his ascension to heaven. And he's sitting there making intercessions for us and him sending the the Holy Spirit here as our comfort. Amen. And that completes the cycle that Jesus is talking about here of, of what we will, the sign that we will see. Uh, and so uh, there's no there's no reason this morning why that uh, we can't uh, understand this as plain as it is. And we need to understand it. We need to know it. And we need to tell others about it. We need to be able to tell others about it. We don't need to be do like I do sometimes and get over and lose my place and lose the book and all that. But listen, we need to we need to be up on this and and and, and be able to help people Amen. as much as we can with this thing because this is the true story of of what uh, uh, salvation is all about and how that we are to make it through this life here on this earth and and be. Uh, uh, comforted by the Holy Spirit Amen. and to uh, encourage him. And we don't need to get discouraged. There's no reason to be discouraged. Amen. Because we've got the Holy Spirit with us. And listen, people, uh, the, more you, the more you depend on him and the more you listen to him, the more you know and the greater it is to you. Amen. And, uh, you know, it's just like, it's just like a bridge. Uh, until you walk across that bridge, you don't know if it'll hold you up or not. You have to put some trust in the Holy Spirit through the Scripture. Amen. And, and, and trust Him to, to uh, uh, speak to you, guide you, and to uh, warn you. Because, listen, sometimes He knows better than you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes we, we think, well, I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that. Well, listen... But there's a little thing that says, hey, you know, you might ought to watch that. And sometimes you do something or another, and it comes back to you, why did you want to do that? Mm. And, and, you know, sometimes you turn and you toss and you waller and you wander about this. But the thing of it is, the Lord gives for you. And, uh, and through, the, through the wooing of the Holy Spirit and through the conversation that he carries on with you inside, you know that you, you shouldn't have done it. Amen. And, but there's forgiveness. People, that's, that's it. And uh, the thing with sinning against the Holy Ghost, uh, don't go there. Don't go there. Uh, I mean, uh, if you do, if you, well, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a situation where I uh, 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 cry to God uh, is the only way. Uh, and I, and I, I, I just I can't I can't imagine I can't imagine anybody doing that. But uh, I, I can imagine this. I can imagine the devil convincing somebody that they've done it in order to keep them from being saved. I can I can imagine that. So anyway, that's our lesson for the day. And sorry that we uh, got kind of lost in our study. But anyway. Thank you all so much and thank you for having us with me.